Raylight has a new Pineapple Mini available in raw copper with Nisha 219B R9080 LED. This light has the same milling profile as the larger Pineapple series of lights. This one happens to be in copper as well, but it's also made in brass. The Pineapple series is one that Raylight's best known for, but it's an entirely new profile from the older light made several years ago here that I've got. This light above was a twist design, but the new Pineapple Mini is a tail click, much like the full size. Full disclosure, Ray at Raylight is a friend and sent me this light to evaluate and review. I'll do my best to remain impartial and give an honest review. Reminder guys, I do have social media pages. Facebook, Instagram are probably my top two places for flashlight content, but I do post to Twitter as well. And let me know in the comments if you think a Patreon would be interesting. I've got one, but not a lot of contents there. So uh, let me know if you'd be interested in joining that. Now the packaging the light comes with is a clear plastic bifold box. I did not get one of those with my light, but if you order it from Ray, you will. The light's vacuum sealed in plastic to prevent any patina from forming on the raw copper during shipping. Ray light offers the light with a uh, 10440 lithium ion battery here, 320 milliamp hours, button top unprotected. And that's what uh, I got with my light. And I'd recommend you get a 10440 if you don't have one as well. And while I've got it open here, you can kind of see the inside, the driver and everything in there. The light also comes with this uh, pocket clip here and I'll talk more about that during my review. Um, no manual is shipped with the light, but one can be found on Raylight's website. This light is made from copper and is delivered raw with no coatings to inhibit the slow and natural patina from forming. And I really like that. The surface texture of the light is what I'd call a machine finish. And maybe you can see that best on the head here. It's not polished but it's got a little bit of texture to it and uh, it kind of wears in. My tail cap here is more polished and that's just from wear and fiddle kind of in my pocket. But that machine texture you can kind of hear in my microphone. When I rub my uh, fingernail across it, it's very light, so not really that big a deal. I think after this review, I will polish mine up manually with some uh, like mother's metal polish and make it really shiny and then clean it up and hopefully the patina will uh, form maybe a little bit quicker. Starting at the tail cap, you've got this extended button here that sticks up just a little bit. And then you've got place there for a 1.5 by six millimeter tritium tube. Tolerances on this button are a lot better than some other Raylite models here. And that's a really nice feature. There's no rattle and uh, little to no side to side play. The button piece is removable here and inside you'll see that uh, rubber kind of boot o-ring. And here is the switch component on the other side. It is a uh, forward switch assembly. That switch is fixed in place with a spring on the other side into the body with some little uh, spring clips. The body here itself is milled to look like a smaller version of the Raylite pineapple here. If the light's standing up like this, we can see these top parts are, they're uh, chamfered just a little bit, but then these uh, horizontal grooves are sharp. And they're not sharp to the point where they're gonna cut you or anything, but they get, let you get a nice purchase on the light without being too aggressive. I quite like it. Um, pretty similar to what I see on my brass and copper pineapple as well. The head here is fairly simple with some horizontal grooves milled in place, uh, similar to what's on the body, but smaller in diameter. The front bezel is smooth and there is a glow-in-the-dark o-ring there. We've got an anti-reflective coated lens and then a relatively deep small reflector with a, just a little bit of orange peel. The 2019 Pineapple Mini is using this uh, pocket clip here and it's generic. It's not specifically engineered for this light and as a result I think retention is a little bit compromised. It's only attachable at the rear, which I'm okay with that, not a problem. Is able to be rotated, but it's uh, fairly stiff, which that's a good thing. It will scratch if you pull it on and off the light, but that's to be expected. But for me, this clip isn't perfect, and that's for a couple of reasons. And let me rotate it so you can see a little better and put my hand underneath it. But number one reason there is that top of that loop is pretty small. Um, I wear jeans most of the time, and you have to really force jeans up in there. It's just not quite enough space. The second reason is I wish it was a little bit deeper carry. Um, I've had the light come on a couple times in my pocket. I wish it had that little bit deeper clip on it and I wish it had a little bit more stiff button or a forward clicky switch instead of a reverse forward clicky switch. Uh, when I compare it to my Olight i3T here, it's a remarkably similarly sized light 
and the pocket clips line up incredibly similarly in location. But this Olight to me is a great carry and it's not because it's that much deeper because they're really pretty much the same. It's because that pocket clip is wider. It just allows it to go down deeper there. And the Olight's also using that uh, reverse clicky switch that is a much stiffer uh, push when you do it. So I don't have any problems with this coming on in my pocket. That said, this has only come on in my pocket twice in the uh, week of carrying it or so. And I've had, I've read on the Raylight Facebook group that a few people have been trying other clips from other lights. And the best one so far seems to be the Freelux Synergy One clip which can be purchased for about $15. I measured the overall length at 89 millimeters, maximum diameter at the head at 15 millimeters, minimum diameter at the body at 12 millimeters, weight with the 10440 battery and clip came in at 60.7 grams. When I initially saw the light on Facebook page, I thought it was a little bit long when I compared it to the original here. And you can see the size difference there, but they're hard to compare because that original is a twist light, which is always going to be shorter because you don't have the uh, switch mechanism. And then the, uh, and I'll throw my Olight i3T in here as well, which you can see lengthwise, they're incredibly similar. Clip location relative on the i3T is pretty much the same as well, but the Olight is about 10 grams heavier and uh, the older Raylite Copper Mini is similar in diameter due to the uh, different modes of operation, but obviously shorter. So the star of the show here really is the LED that's being used. It's a Nisha 219B R9080 at 4500 Kelvin. It's a tint snob and high CRI fanboy's dream LED. Now, um, to decipher that, what it kind of means is that R9080, it's the batch number and it's Especially the tint here is a little bit rosy, almost pink, while maintaining a neutral white. Output isn't up to modern standards, but where it lacks there, it really makes up for in quality. These LEDs are fairly difficult to get a hold of in any decent quantity, as I believe they're no longer produced. Uh, the tint here is a good mix between neutral white and warm, is my feeling, but it's got a little bit of rosy tint of pink in there, which is great. The CRI measures roughly at 97, which is fantastic. I think I'm going to see if I can get my hands on a few more of these to swap into other lights that I have just because it's a fantastic LED, in my opinion. Raylight lists the maximum out here, output here with a 10440 battery as 300 lumens and less so with a AA. The beam here is well suited for EDC use. It's a traditional beam profile with a slight bit of hot spot intensity um, and then some spill as well. Like I said, good uh, overall general use. Okay, tonight I've got the Raylite Copper Pineapple Mini, and this is a pretty fancy flashlight. It's running the Nisha 209B R9080 LED in 4500 Kelvin. Super high, super nice LED. Um, here it is in moonlight mode, pretty low, as always, bumping up. You can start to see a lot better. It's a good estimation of the beam pattern here. Um, nice color of the tint as well. It's a little rosy. It's a cross between kind of a warm and a neutral white. Here is the next mode up. Reasonable power here and this is running the 10440. We can see it start to throw pretty well for what it is. And then this is the highest mode here. Really shows off that tint nicely. Um, it is winter time here as you can see the snow so grass isn't very green but you can see the point here just how nice the tint is here. Here is my Olight i3T in copper. It's running a Philips uh, Lexon, Lexon uh, LED. Cool white. You can see just the massive difference here between it and the Raylight here. That Raylight just has that nice rosy tint you can see on the snow versus the Olight. It's kind of a cool greenish tint. Just to me this isn't as nearly as appealing. So in comparison here is the older Raylight Pineapple Mini uh, AAA as well. This is running a 10440. Um, I'm going to guess it's a little bit brighter. It's a Nisha 219C LED. Uh, you can see it's a little more yellower and uh, overall it's a little bit wider beam as well. A little more output. That's not uncommon for the uh, Nisha 219C LEDs. They are brighter. This is the tint difference here between the 219Bs. You can just see it's a nice rosier tint and that's the main thing I wanted to point out here is this tint is just absolutely gorgeous. This light can run with a AA or 10440. From my run times here, you can see that performance is quite a bit better with a 10440 since with a AAA, you get a very brief amount of output before the light steps down. 
Uh, I use the 320 milliamp hour battery that Raylight makes available as an optional purchase with this light for my tests. I was running in mode two, which is the factory default at 100% output, and uh, the highest relative output was good for one minute before stepping down to about 30% relative output. And from here, it was a pretty linear decline uh, to make me think it's almost an unregulated driver. Total runtime was just at 80 minutes on the 320 milliamp hour 10440, and heat's a pretty much a non-issue with this light due to that rapid step down and the good Good thermal properties of copper. I also ran the light with a 750 milliamp hour Amazon Basics nickel metal hydride battery and maximum output there was only good for maybe oh, 30 seconds or so and then it stepped down to about 18% relative output and it ran here for much longer than I expected. I ended up stopping the test at the 220 minute mark before I went to bed. Output here was a good deal less. Uh, my recommendation would be to run this light with a 10440 as your primary power source and use a AAA or nickel metal hydride battery as your backup power source only. I measured low voltage protection with the uh, 10440 coming in at 3.116 volts and the nickel metal hydride coming in at 1.04 volts. Um, the Raylight Copper Pineapple is using a reverse clicky tail switch which, as I mentioned before, it's got four brightness modes available. And so here is moonlight mode, low, medium, and high. There are a variety of options inside the UI as well. Uh, the driver features high temperature protection, low voltage protection, memory mode, and other programmable options such as you can switch the mode, uh, the, the progression of light brightnesses, low, medium, high, high, medium, low moonlight on and off, memory mode on and off, and the ability to set it back to default. The light doesn't come with a manual, but uh, Raylight's Facebook group member, Kevin Malley, created this programming guide that, and said I could republish it here on the review, and a big thanks goes out to him. For me, I turned on memory mode and moonlight mode, and I'll throw a link to a, the PDF I created to uh, make this a little bit visually easier. It looks a little bit complicated, but with the light in hand and the manual in front of you, it's really not too bad. But your uh, mode groups, they can go from mode one is uh, 2%, 20%, 100%. Mode two, the default is 10%, 40%, 100%. Mode three is 2, 10, 50%. Mode four is 50%, 100% strobe and SOS. And as I mentioned, you can um, then toggle on and off your memory mode, your moonlight mode, your mode order defaults toggle, and then you can reset it back to default. So for me, the pros are really the great tint here of that LED. I love the raw copper. You can see I've got a number of copper lights and some I don't have here on camera, but you can see they take on just a wonderful in my opinion, beautiful patina over time. I love that. And my hands aren't even that sweaty. So for me, it's a slow process. I like the narrow profile of the Copper Mini. It has a good purchase in the hand. Uh, it's got better tolerances in the tail switch assembly, less slop, which is nice, and several output options. And it's pretty programmable, especially for a light this size. The cons, I've had minor issues with this coming on in my pocket due to that proud tail switch in low voltage mode. Ray tells me he is looking for a stiffer spring for or for future batches of this light. So hopefully that will help a little bit. I wish the uh, pocket clip did ride a little bit deeper and allowed for a little bit thicker pants. Uh, the driver here seems to be pretty conservative on temperatures and really isn't uh, optimized for use with a uh, nickel metal hydride or alkaline battery. For me, that's okay. I'll run this with a lithium like I do with most flashlights. And the driver here is glued in place, so it's not that moddable. My conclusion is that if you're a raw copper fan or tint or CRI snob, you can buy this light and enjoy it just for those features alone. The LED here is rare outside the custom or modified flashlight world. They're hard to come by in large quantities and their output isn't the greatest, but they make up for that in an absolutely lovely tint. It's a slight rosy 4500 Kelvin and a super high CRI at 97. It makes plants and other colors really pop. The original Mini here was a fun light due to its small size and raw copper, but its driver had some issues initially. The new one here fixes those issues at the tail button instead of a twist operation. For me, the clip on the new Copper Mini isn't perfect, and I do hope Raylight offers a custom clip in the near future. I'll certainly buy it. It's nice to see a light with so many mode options available in a small form factor, and for me, the default mode too works pretty well, and I think that's where I'll probably leave it after I turned on moonlight mode. Overall, this is a fun little light and one that I'm enjoying quite a bit. If you're interested in checking this light out, I'll have a link to where you can get it from the Raylight website down below in the description. As always, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of this video and light. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can catch future reviews. Thanks.